Welcome to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I am Baxter Colburn. And I'm Simon Provan. How are we doing, Simon? I'm doing great, Baxter. How about yourself? You know, I am doing quite all right, actually. Yeah, Hanging in there, having a good time, ready for some more soccer. Absolutely. Love yeah. and life. Good. It's a good day to be alive, Simon. There you go. Very good day to be alive. Well, we've got a great show in store for you today, guys. We've got some uh, exciting interviews to be to behold as well. We'll be joined by FC Dallas Walker Zimmerman in our second segment and uh, head coach Paul Riley of Western New York Flash as well later on in the show for our Women's Soccer Spotlight. And if you would like to be on our show as well, I mean, obviously we'd love to hear from you guys, but uh, you can email the show at twoupfrontsoccer at gmail.com. And you can also hear the show as well at uh, Sports Radio America on Fridays from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand anytime on Spreaker iTunes, and on iHeartRadio as well. Download any of those apps, get it downloaded to you immediately, subscribe, write us a review, all those great things. So we appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Did you talk about Facebook and all that Not stuff? Yeah, that's that you your did? job. That, that is my job. I, I just didn't know if my thunder got stolen. No, man. There, that's uh, all you. you know, as good as I'm feeling, Baxter, it's okay to steal the thunder. No, no, so no. Well. You're fine. <laughs> uh, anyways, you can find us on Facebook, 2 Up Front. We're also on Twitter, at 2 Up Front Soccer. And, of course, we all we each have our own uh, Twitter handles, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. Oh, yeah. So our first segment of the show here, Simon, is kind of just an absolute... Sh- I don't know what to call it. It's the schizophrenic way to start the show. Back. There's so, so many jump things. All over the There's place. so many things, Simon. I don't know what to say. I mean, first of all, Leicester City, congratulations, the Premier League champions. Even though they've got one more champions. game left. That's the Champions League. But well, they will be well, in next year, exactly. though. Exactly. They will yeah. be in that next year, though. They are In the group stage. I mean, they, they won Premier League, so they don't have to qualify for Champions League. That's scary, they are, though. In. I feel bad for them. I feel like they're going to just get beat up next year. Okay, you know what? I'm going to say something. Please. Because this is not... Just at you, Baxter. Be a lot but of- all season long, soccer pundits, they're not going to win. They're not going to win. There's no way. That, even at week 30, they're still saying there's no way they're going to win. Tottenham's going to come and, and destroy them, right? <laughs> they defy the odds. They, they beat did. everybody. They're Premier League champions. And now, already people are saying, well, yeah, but it, they're like the one-hit wonders. There's no way this is going to happen again. There's no way they're going to do is well it in Champions though? Is it going to happen here's, again? My, here's my point. Let me, let, me, let me finish here. Can a man finish? Okay. My point is, let them enjoy this. Of course. Who cares? Who cares about next year? Let them enjoy this. Let them enjoy this. Plus, everybody's forgetting. Now, will they? I don't know. The, the next three months will be very telling, whether the owner sticks with these guys or sure. he decides to cash in and sell. If he decides to cash in and sell, we're obviously going to see a different Leicester that probably won't have as much talent on it. Yeah. But the other thing is, is everybody's talking about the depth, that they were lucky this season, that they got through without any injuries. Very true. Okay. At minimum, by qualifying for Champions League, at minimum, they're going to draw in another 150 million pounds of money. Crazy. 150 million pounds. You can buy a lot of great players with that money. Well, Jamie Vardy's hanging around, though. They did retain him, though. They resigned him to a new contract. That's, so that's he'll be huge. around. So that's a one guy that but, you're going to want. You yeah. know, the extra, the, the, you know, people are saying they'll probably end up playing 20 extra games than they did last year. That depends on how far they go in the yeah, Champions League. Yeah, really it does depend. So if, they, if it, anything, you just want to go get a lot of depth this offseason. Well, that's, I, you're that's, gonna need it. that's it. And if they do, they're going to be fine. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, can everybody just pause for a moment? Stop talking about next year. They've proved you wrong this entire season. But it's fun to talk about that stuff, though. <laughs> but if this is Manchester United, right? Nobody's going to talk about next year. If this is, oh sure, if, they if this, would. No, they're not going to be talking about. Are they going to do this again next year? Oh, no, they said the that for Chelsea. Even, they said that for Chelsea last year. The season's not even done. And look at where Chelsea is. Chelsea's in ninth. They're not even going to make it into anything next year. They're going to have a very quiet I, year next I year. I don't remember anybody talking about can Chelsea do this again as next a year. champion. People you're were always... shocked. People were shocked that that. Well, I'm saying that people are talking about how Leicester's not even going to be in the top four next year. <sighs> Well, it really does depend. I mean, Manchester United continues to implode, though, so I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, even teams like West Ham are right on the brink of, you know, of even making it in. Right. So that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Because we can't sit it's here just and a numbers say game. that that's there's all no it way is. this is. Now, Leicester repeating. Yeah, repeating is always tough. Repeating is tough for Manchester United. Repeating is tough for a Manchester City. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the Premier League, yeah, teams want to win it, but it's all about getting in those top four. Yes. Getting into Champions League. I, I think Leicester City has a great opportunity to at least get back in a Champions League next year. I agree. No, I mean, so I, leave them alone. Okay. Let him, let him, leave Leicester alone. Oh, my gosh. You sound like the, the big brother, like, <laughs> leave them alone. They I was are doing nice. the, the Britney Spears thing. Uh, leave Britney alone. I, 
Brittany. Okay, I'm Never off really of get my, into that. I'm off of my hot box. Are you here. sure? Yes, yes. Do you need me to? Do you need a help? A hand down there? Are you, you going to no, be okay? I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. good. I just I I've been thinking about this. I have to say, you know, coming in sure. to the station, listening to uh, to other soccer shows, which I do love, by the way. Uh, but I just I get I got sick of from listening yesterday and today mm-hmm. of hearing people say, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but it's like no, yeah, but yet. Let them at least get through game thirty eight. <laughs> And then you can start talking they've about They've got the one more game. I mean, they've already won. They won it with two games left to go, honestly, at that point, which is fantastic. I mean, that's what you want to do. I mean, Tottenham, really, that was their own worst enemy down the stretch, which to be expected. Arsenal was even expected to be the best team in the league this year. And obviously, yeah. for those that know and follow Arsenal, that's just wishful thinking. So don't even bother well, trying I wouldn't to even that. say that. I would actually say that Arsenal, I mean, all season long, it seemed like they were doing uh, dealing with a rash of injuries. Well, they year. were, yeah. And that's the hard part about it, too, because as we know, games are not won on paper. But Arsenal, on paper, was probably the best team through and through, which is unfortunate because, you know, they finished the way they did. Chelsea's going to miss out. Liverpool's going to miss out. Unless they do something, unless they win Europa League, then they'll find a way to get back in, which would right. be great for them. I mean, they're in the Europa, the, the Europa Europa League final against Sevilla. Yeah, and I'll tell you what that they've had a uh, you know couple of awesome games. They they had the uh, the big win against Dortmund where they came back. I've yeah. I got quite a few Liverpool friends or fans who are friends who are Liverpool fans. Fan friends and they were uh, just talking about how that was one of the greatest games they've ever seen Liverpool play. Too funny. Well, another thing that is somebody as a good friend of ours, Stephen Gerrard, uh, or Gerrard, or however you want to say him. Um, he's been saving some compliments about uh, the motherland, Liverpool. Yeah, you know, we're not going to blame him for, for what he said. It's just interesting that he seems to reiterate this every couple of months or so. Uh, he recently said, I'll be going home at some point. I don't want to start any unnecessary rumors. Yeah. I'm really happy where I am at the moment. Too late. But I'm sure somewhere down the line I will represent Liverpool Football Club. I miss my friends and my family. I miss a bit of cold weather. That's just crazy talk. I miss going <laughs> to the games. I spent 35 years in Liverpool. Which, yeah, I mean, he grew up there. Yeah. He plays with the team. Liverpool's my home. It always will be. This is my second home for a short period. Short period of time. Of course. Sooner rather than later, I will return to where I'm comfortable with my people, and that's Liverpool. My people. It just is a beetle at heart. It's really right, what it comes right. down well, to. Well, you know, and, and we've, we've talked about this off-air, Baxter. I have no problem at all with those comments. No, whatsoever. not at all. He he's, wants he's, to go back home. And, you know, applaud a player who's I talk about going back once. to Florida every you know couple of months as well, too. People aren't chastising me for it. Sure. But, but why... My question is, why would you bring that distraction onto the somebody, LA Galaxy? Because the reporter was smart and did their job. That's true. That's why. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I mean, Liverpool's almost done. I'm sure he's been following all year long. He's probably watched Jurgen Klopp. They've obviously missed his midfield presence, good, bad, or slippery otherwise. You know, they still appreciate him, what he did in the midfield. Well, that's, I mean, honestly, I think if, if Klopp was there... Mm-hmm. When he Gerard, was there. When he was oh, there, yeah, Gerard he would still, would still be, there. be there. He would Which, still again, be there. no problem with that. My only thing is... At least finish it by saying, but, but I'm, I'm happy, happy to be, to be yeah. here. Well, I mean, he obviously is happy. He's scoring goals right. in bunches right now for the Galaxy, and the Galaxy are doing tremendous things. Well, for that's the, a good point. He's talking in the best way possible. By, by showing his actions. Ball. Yeah, that's sometimes right, yeah. You, mean, I, you, know, you can say anything you want about, hey, I missed this, I missed that, but that would be different if he was not going on the field and producing. He's looking like vintage Steven Gerrard. He's pinging the ball over the field, and he's scoring great goals. So it's kind of like you saying, man, I really want to be back in Florida at some point, yeah. but you do such an awesome job with two up front. You Absolutely. Let your action... I would be such a hassle to try to do it remotely, so that's why for you, Simon, that's why I'm still here in Wisconsin, not back in beautiful sunny Florida, even though yes. it's cold and rainy today. <laughs> it's May. Come on, <laughs> little sun. Well, we had a beautiful weekend, I have to say. It Aww. was uh, great. You know, it's we probably going to awesome snow Mother's tomorrow, day. Simon. Knowing our luck, <laughs> that's right. It's ridiculous. Well, Sunday was awesome. Mother's Day, we had uh, oh, yeah, it was beautiful. beautiful weather. We went out and played a soccer game with the U9 kids at. 11 o'clock in the morning. Couldn't ask for it. All right. Uh, one other thing, too. One other note before we go to break. Uh, the Milwaukee Torrent, they got a 4-3 victory over Cardinal Stritch this last weekend, so congratulations to them. Uh, they take on uh, another. They have another game this coming weekend as well uh, up at the FC Wisconsin Fields in Germantown as well. Go and check that out. Find their social media pages to find all the information for that as well. Uh, he's Simon Proven. I'm Baxter Colburn. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, FC Dallas defender Walker Zimmerman will be here with us to chat a little bit about what's going on and shed some light on maybe why FC Dallas isn't playing so well right now. We'll talk about that and more with him right after this. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com.
Welcome back inside the studio for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Simon, time to head to the wonderful world of Texas, where we get to have an MLS-featured spotlight here today for our show. We get to chat with number 25 of FC Dallas. It's Walker Zimmerman. He joins us on the program. Walker, hello, sir, and welcome to the program. How's it going? Not too bad, sir. We are glad to have you on the program. Uh, you've got a, an exciting week of matches coming up for you this week. Two games coming up for this week. How do you guys prepare for a, a double, usually? I feel like in uh, playing just one game, let alone an MLS, is hard. But uh, playing two in the same week, that's got to be tiring, wouldn't you say? It is, it is tiring. Um, so this week, it's a lot about rest and recovery. Um, so not much training is going on. It's more about uh, making sure everyone's well-rested and, and ready to go for Wednesday. So you've got your two games this week. I mean, right now, what would you say the uh, the status is of FC Dallas? Because, frankly, I think a lot of folks are a little surprised about where you guys are right now. And uh, considering how well you guys finished last year, do you have is it is it a you know an injury issue? Is it a personnel issue? Is it uh, what's been hindering FC Dallas from taking MLS by storm like we all thought they were going to this year? No, I mean I don't I don't think it's time to hit a panic button or anything like that. Um, you know, we, we've dropped the, the past few road games, and we do have to figure out how to grind out points on the road. But at the same time, we're sitting at 17 points um, through 11 games, and we got two games at home where we've been really good. So I think the only thing it does is add a little bit more pressure for these next two games uh, to try and get a lot of points um, because of our struggle on the road. But I don't think anyone in the locker room or in the coaching staff is panicking. Um, we know it's a long season, and... And so we're we're fine with where we are right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. You guys have had a, um, you know, you're you're sitting in fourth right now in the West, which you know, early, as you said, early in the season, no reason for the panic button. I'm curious just a little bit about the um, inconsistencies with, you know, some of the score lines that you guys come out rocking, putting in a lot of goals, and then you have those games where, uh, you know, you're getting beat four to one or or what have you. How do you, how do you as a team, you know, start to fix some of that inconsistency so that you can finish the season strong like you did last year and, and possibly, you know, make it all the way to MLS Cup? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think we are a team where um, we are very dangerous in the counter, very dangerous going forward. It's one of those things where, you know, if, we, if we're a team that goes down, you know, say two zero, you know, we don't pack it in and, and try and try and make a, a close result. We're we're gunning for it, you know. Um, we're always trying to, to push and, and get all the all the goals we can, and so sometimes that does leave you uh, a little bit more vulnerable. Um, you know, we got to figure out how to maintain some organization and composure in those in those games. And so, I think we learned a lot from um, from Vancouver and New York, and you saw a pretty good defensive performance in Toronto, where you know I thought we had a few chances to equalize and um, had, a, had a decently solid game against a very good offensive team. So. Uh, it was definitely steps in the right direction. How important was it to have Mario Diaz back on the field for you guys? Yeah, Mario's a great player. Um, you know, he makes a lot of things click. Um, he's very creative, has the, the vision and the skill to, to pull off things that not a lot of players in this league can do. So it's, it's always a plus having him on the field again. You know, one of the exciting things, Walker, about FC Dallas is the youth that you have on the team, and we see a lot of youth playing. Uh, you know, Kellen Acosta, of course, uh, your goalkeeper, Jesse Gonzalez, even, you know, Chris Seitz stepping in there. Uh, Barrios, only 25. you got a lot of great players, of course, Fabian Castillo. You know, it's it's great to see a team in MLS committed to youth, and uh, I'm wondering as a core, you know, how does that make you guys feel in moving forward? We, we embrace it. Um, it's something where we think, well, especially now uh, that we've been together, the core of players for the past two, three years, um, you know, we've had, we've had experience. Even though we're young, we got a lot of guys with a lot of games. And so for us, we use our youth as, hey, we, we have the energy to run, so let's, let's make sure we, you know, win that part of the game, the physical part of the game. And um, so that's something that's very important for us, and uh, I think it helps, helps us out being, uh, being so young, being so passionate, um, and just wanting to win all the time. Yeah, and I think you know we're we're talking about some of these uh, inconsistencies, and I, I wonder if youth plays a part in that. But at the same time, if as the season goes on, that'll actually work to your advantage. You you know you look at a team like NYCFC. Let's be honest, there's a lot of age on that team, and as these guys mm-hmm. get later in the season, maybe they start to wear out. Where then FC Dallas can really take advantage of that. Right, 
And, and we talked about the depth on our team as well, and that's something where you know once these other competitions start for us um, with Open Cup and CONCACAF, that um, I think you're going to see a lot more of the depth that we do have, and uh, I think it's going to be very beneficial for us moving moving forward towards the playoffs. Moving back for a moment, Walker, as we're talking here with Walker Zimmerman on two up front of FC Dallas. Uh, last season, you really uh, threw your name out into the spotlight in uh, in MLS after that uh, that penalty kick that you notched in the playoffs. Can you walk us through that moment just very briefly? I know it's hard to describe all the emotions, but at that point, though, when you're called on to take that game-winning penalty kick, what's going through your head at that point? And ultimately, I'm sure after you made it, it was pure, you know, pure joy. But can you explain that situation just a little bit for us? Right. The, uh, that game was one of the best games, most fun games that I've ever gotten to be a part of. Um, I think I speak for all of us on the team when, when I say that, but uh, just, just the emotions in the playoffs and in playoff sports, um, you know, you can't really match it. It's not something that you can practice or train. And so uh, the PK came up. We, um, we've we been practicing PKs all week. And so the first four uh, pickers for our team were actually guys who had not missed in practice uh, all week. And so that's kind of how we chose our PK lineup. And, um, you know, as soon as I stepped up, Thankfully, Jesse had kind of taken a lot of the pressure off. He made two big saves. Sure, yeah. So, you know, it's not like I'm trying to kick to stay alive. It's, you know, hey, no pressure, but if you make this, we win. So, <laughs> um, yeah, the pressure was a little bit lower because of uh, the performances of our other kickers and, and of our goalie. But, uh, yeah, I just stepped up. I knew where I was going and just said, hey, if he makes the save and goes the right way, like, he's going to have to make a save, you know. Just put it on frame and put it where you want it and – uh, obviously, all chaos broke loose after it went in. So, Walker, uh, you know, I'd like to change gears here a little bit. You've spent quite a bit of time in the uh, youth national team system. Three appearances with the U18s, 10, ten appearances with the 20s, uh, appearance or two with the 23s. Wondering about your aspirations, obviously, of getting back to that, and if you've perhaps heard from Andy Herzog with the U23s, or even if Klinsman's been in contact with you at all. Yeah, so the youth, youth national teams have been a big part of my development um, growing up ever since, you know, U14, where you look back and you look at all the cool experiences that, um, you know, you've had as a soccer player. And for me, uh, just being able to travel the world and go to a lot of these different countries was made possible through U.S. soccer and through those youth national teams. So i um, very grateful for every time you get called in. Um, and so, yeah, the U23s, it was... Uh, pretty disappointing how it ended up for us um, and not qualifying for the Olympics. And honestly, I'm just going to miss being around those guys because, you know, a few of them, we've been together for a really long time in that system. And uh, so we were just talking after the game at the dinner table and, you know, we were so sad, first of all, not to qualify for the Olympics, but second of all, because, you know, the only time we'll ever see each other now is, is if we all go to a full national team camp and, uh, so it's kind of the end of a youth soccer, uh, youth national team experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it does pretty, pretty nostalgic uh, to, to finish that up. But now our goals are, uh, or my goal especially, is to, to make it with the full national team. And that's just going to come by putting consistent seasons together in MLS and, and hopefully getting a chance. Um, and so right now the U23 cycle is over and now about, you know, making it to the full team. So you, you talked about not qualifying for the Olympics, and obviously it's the second cycle in a row, Walker, that uh, the U.S. hasn't qualified for the Olympics. Looking back on that, is there anything, you know, putting on the, the coach's shoes, if you will, anything that perhaps could have been done differently to get the U.S. back in the Olympics or what needs to happen to get the U.S. back in the Olympics in four years? Well, I think I think if you talk to any coach who's involved, you know, with any game, I think they're always going to look back and say, "Well, what if I did this? What if I used this formation or this personnel?" And so there's always those kind of questions, um, especially when you don't qualify or you don't win a game. And so I'm sure those questions were raised. And um, at the end of the day, the responsibility does come on us players who performed and uh, were unable to get the job done. Um, and you know, it's it's frustrating. It's it's unfortunate because, you know, you think about how big of an event the Olympics is and I think I think really once once the Olympics come around this summer we're all gonna have a little bit of extra pain in our heart mm-hmm. because, you know, we're gonna realize 
been, again, how big the Olympics are and, and how big of an opportunity it is for not just us as players, but for the country and for the sport of soccer, uh, just to keep growing. And, and so it's a heavy burden, but at the same time, um, you know, no regrets and uh, it's time to move forward and, and just hopefully um, we'll, we'll get it all squared away and, and qualify for the next Olympics. Speaking of moving forward, Walker, looking ahead at what you as, uh, as FC Dallas have to deal with the remainder of the month of May, I don't think the soccer gods were very thank, very nice to you guys. I mean, you played Toronto first. Now you take on two of the Cascadia teams in Portland and Seattle. Then you play the Revolution in San Jose. You look at a month like this, uh, you've got two of those games at home. Other than that, you're on the road for the rest. What do you think about it in terms of, you know, as a, I, mean, I know Western Conference standings are going to be huge against Portland and Seattle, and then obviously San Jose mm-hmm. as well. Um, how do you guys prepare for a month like this where you know you're going to be tested game in and game out? Well, I think the preparation just comes from, I mean, they probably back to preseason, getting your fitness in, um, getting in, you know, a lot of games so that you're ready for a month like this. Um, you know, the last three two games we've had have been really long, not just away trips, really long away trips, mm-hmm. going to Vancouver, and then going to New York, and back to Toronto, and so very long trips, um, very grueling uh, for the guys, especially with guys with families being away, um, even two days before a game, so, uh, you know, it's nice to be back at home, and so we stress the importance of picking up three points at home every game, so we're approaching it that way, and um, yeah, it was really... I mean, you can look at past experience. Like we've had some past uh, past uh, years where we've had months um, like this. You know, we've had a lot of games, a lot of road games, and so uh, we can look back at that past experience and figure out, you know, what schedule works, whether that's practice times or like leaving two days early before a game, and just kind of relying on that experience to to hopefully have some good performances. I think an even more imp- important question, Walker. I have you starting on my MLS fantasy team this week. <laughs> Am I going to expect you to go 90 minutes both games, and can I expect two shout-outs as well so I can get the double the points, or should I uh, should I look somewhere else on my bench this week? No, I, I would always uh, advise you to stick with that. I'm a believer myself. <laughs> For you, you know? I appreciate it. I, know, I appreciate your uh, your contribution to my team this year. It's meant, it's meant a lot. And, this, and to be fair, I mean, when I found out that we had this interview, I was like, oh, that works out well. I've had him on my team all year long, too. So that's yeah, uh, <laughs> I gotta get a, I still got to catch up to Simon. He's a little farther ahead in the, sta- in the table than I am. But uh, I, I am curious to... Both help out. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I am curious, though, too, and I'm surprised Simon hasn't asked us yet. You guys play Simon's favorite team, the Portland Timbers, as well this week. Well, so. I was trying to be respectful yeah, I, here. I understand that, but I mean, there's a, you got to, you know, have at it a little bit. But, uh, you know, playing against, you know, two Cascadia teams like Portland and Seattle, I mean, obviously you got to deal with Diego Valeri and a lot of those creative guys that Portland has, and then, you know, deal with some of the guys like Jordan Morris and Clint Dempsey for Seattle as well. When you face two teams that are so attacking heavy, you know, as a as a back line, and you know, even with Jesse as well too. I mean, but I know he uh, he took a little bit of a knock in the head that last game too. I mean, do you guys have your separate team meetings, just kind of saying, "Hey, we got to prepare for these ridiculously creative teams," or do you just approach it as a as a unit and say, "You know what? We're just going to go after it and try to counter what they bring at us." Yeah, we just go after it as a unit, and you know, like I said, we're we're confident in who we are, and so any any given game, we're confident that we can get a result, and so. You know, there was a meeting uh, with the team, just kind of like post game in New York. Just like, hey guys, we got to figure this out. We got to like bond together more than ever, um, and just really grind, grind out some results, and get back to the winning column. And so, um, you know, there is talk, but like I said, there's no panicking. But it's just uh, extra concentration, extra focus, and uh, just getting back to our, our basics. Uh, last question here, Walker. Um, you know, don't want to talk about FC Dallas without mentioning Oscar Pereira. He's still also himself pretty much a youthful coach. What's it like to play under somebody who has a wealth of experience like Oscar does? Yeah, Oscar, he's a, he's a very intense intense coach. Um, he brings out a lot of emotion um, and he tries to bring out the most out of his players. And so, you know, every practice, every game, it's, very intense, and that's good. It's a very professional environment. Um, he is definitely his number one goal is to win games, and that's what you want from a coach. And so his passion for winning, his passion for hard work definitely translates over into the team. And so, you know, the result is a team that works really hard and really hates losing. Um, and so he's had a, a really good effect on the club. Awesome. Hey, we're talking to Walker Zimmerman. 
Number seven overall draft pick in the 2013 MLS Super Draft. Made his appear- first appearance against D.C. United. Was an All-American at Furman University. Walker, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for joining us here in the studio. Or over the phone. Oh, but same thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Walker. We appreciate it. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got more in store for you here on Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. He's Simon Provan. I'm Baxter Colburn. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more right after this. Back here in another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And I'm Simon Provan. All right. Special thanks to Walker Zimmerman of FC Dallas, who just joined us in the last segment. Great opportunity to get him to speak with him. I really hope he gets me those fantasy points that he was talking about, Simon. I need I need a win this week. I'm sitting in fourth right now in fantasy. I, I need what? need some more points. You do. I, I kind of snuck up on you at some point here you did. during the week. And, you did. Uh, you did. I'm not going to complain about that. No, no. But, no, no. you know, he's got two games in this. That's uh, one of the reasons why. I know. I told him, I'm like, hey. If you're going to play 90 minutes, if you're going to play 180 minutes this whole weekend, you're going to get a goal or assist or something, let me know now. That way I can captain you and, you know, feel like I actually know something what's going on when it you comes know, to MLS Fantasy. I do want to say, during our break here, I reached out to the media director on FC Dallas just to thank her for yeah, setting yep, us up. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and Leanne had responded with, well, had I known you were a Timbers fan, Ooh. I would have denied the request. Of course, there was a smiley face <laughs> following that, so I always, I always appreciate a little bit of banter Sure, like sure. No, that's, you know, it's all, all in good fun, obviously. You know, Baxter, FC Dallas, I will say, was actually the first team that I supported somewhat in MLS. That's right, because you were down in that vicinity. Weren't That's you? right. I was down in Texas and I uh, actually went to Pizza Hut Park before it was officially opened. Oh. Um, they had op- they had opened 12,000 seats. Was it Caesars or Domino's no, or something at that no, point? No, what, what, what it was is they were they were playing in the stadium while they were still doing some construction and okay, most of it sure. was in the parking lot. So what they did is allowed 12,000 people in for that season. Oh, and okay. uh, So I thankfully got to go out there. I actually got to see Freddie Adu back in the D.C. United days. Oh, that's days. right. That's right. I remember you telling me that. Uh, so I did, I did have um, you know some support there for FC Dallas, but you know, I was in Austin, so it was still far enough away where it wasn't like. Well, ah, Texas is huge it anyway, is, though. It it's is. one of those things. It's like, oh, we've got so many professional teams. Really, I never see them. I don't know. Right. Well, and we're you know very likely going to see a team in San Antonio at some point. That is in the true. Next well, the USL here. side so far has been doing well. So yeah, good for them. So yes. yeah, thanks to Walker Zimmerman for stopping by on the program. Time now to switch over to the NWSL. They had a, an interesting weekend. Some big games that took place as well. Uh, the results maybe not going the way uh, some folks maybe wanted. Uh, you look at some of these games that took place this last weekend, Simon. Uh, the Orlando Pride notably getting the biggest win, I think, of the weekend. I they agree win 2-0 with that. over the Seattle Reign at home. So you, you talk about you know really setting a precedent going forward, saying, hey, yeah, we might be the new kid on the block, but we're here to party and we're going to have a good time. Yeah, and actually Orlando is now tied in the standings with Seattle. And uh, by goal difference, they're actually... One uh, one notch above Seattle, mm. which which is surprising considering the season Seattle had last year and the season before that Seattle had. Well, you look at it though too. I mean, FC Kansas City they haven't even won a game yet right. this year. You know, I mean that's one of the other games they lost to the Houston Dash. That was a game that I actually got a chance to watch the entire match of, and uh, it was great to see the Houston Dash continue to to put things together going forward. I mean, they went two one. A lot of this action never really didn't really take place until after about the seventieth minute as well too, but still some good play and uh two ladies getting their first goals as well of the season. Absolutely. And man, what a season Abu Gagu is having. It is uh, quite incredible, you know, gets gets a goal again. Uh but she's been dominant in that final third. She has. She got a goal and an assist in this one. She was actually named the NWSL player of the week as Deservedly well. Deservedly so. I mean that's now two players from the Dash that have been named player of the week. You had Rachel Daly opening weekend. Now you've got Abu Gado as well. It's fantastic to see that Houston seems to be that quiet giant right now. Even though they're technically fifth in the power rankings across the league right now, they're two, one and one. They've got seven points. You know, they still have to deal with teams like Orlando, Portland, Chicago, the Washington Spirit. The Washington Spirit, though, I feel like we're, they they played a, a very brutal 0-0 draw to the Portland Thorns this last weekend as well. And I was a little disappointed. I got a chance to watch most of the second half of this game. I was really hoping to see a goal. And, and Portland really looked like they controlled this game. But every time, and I know I've mentioned this on the program before, every time I see Crystal Dunn with the ball, it's amazing how fast she is. It's well, amazing just how dynamic she is. You saw it in this game that, you know, a lot of times you need somebody else to create a scoring opportunity mm-hmm. for you. She creates her own scoring opportunities. Granted, they didn't end up as goals, 
But it was quite amazing that uh, the the shots she did have. First of all, um, Portland's goalkeeper was was playing uh, top notch soccer this weekend. Yes, because any any other day, Crystal Dunn's going to have two or three goals. Crystal Dunn, Diana Matheson, they continued to rain in chances, but Portland weathered the storm. Tobin Heath leaving with a red card in this game as well. Some yeah, those folks are a little little edgy about that one because Tobin's well, not really a violent player, though. No, but she threw a temper tantrum, and it's in the it's in the rules that if you kick a ball away out of anger, you know you're going to get a card for that. Yeah. She was already on a yellow card, and she ends up getting the second yellow. That's I'm going to be blunt. That's irresponsibility on That's Tobin's true. part. No, I, I agree with you on that one. Someone that is looked up to very highly in this league, you got to be, you got to be a little bit better about that. Honestly, I mean, you don't you don't kick a ball away. It's like we're not we're not in elementary school anymore. You don't just no. kick a ball and be like, ah, I'm mad. Like, you no, know, you're what? a professional. And I give the ref a lot of credit because there's some refs. There's some refs who would look at that and go, "Well, it's it's one of the stars, so you know I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to give her oh, a red yeah. card." You know, we see that in MLS. We see that in the Premier League. I I love. A league that will sit there and go, no, you know what? I don't care who you are. Exactly. The rules are the rules. Play by them. Well, and that's one thing I think that NWSL is, to my knowledge, has always been fairly consistent on. It's like, look, we don't care if you're Abby Wambach or if you're some you know seventh round draft pick. We're going to treat you exactly the same, no matter what. Which is right. good. You know, the stars are already getting paid a lot more money, so why give them even more of an advantage exactly. on the field? <laughs> exactly. This isn't LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's right. Uh, one other game that took place, the Boston Breakers and the Chicago Red Stars. The Red Stars, they continue to win. Kristen Press continues to score. She's short. And, man, what an amazing goal that was. Perfectly yeah. placed, half volley. Uh, this is, I think, the second week in a row, or at least the second time this season, where she's been in the right place at the right time. But here she is, you know, top of the arc. Ball bounces right in front of her. She smacks her foot on there. Boom, into the back of the goal, and Chicago Red Stars take the win. People are asking, saying, who's supposed to replace Abby Wambach? Who's supposed to replace Megan Rapino at the Olympics? I think Kristen Press is raising her hand, saying, hey, guys, me. I'm leading the league in shots on goal and in shots and in goals. I think I'll be. I think we'll be just fine. And really, they will. They really will. Honestly, I mean, because you look at what they're going to do with the Olympics. They're going to probably bring Crystal Dunn. They're going to bring Kristen Press. They're going to bring Tobin Heath. They're going to bring just a, an array of talented ladies down there with them. I, Alex Morgan, of course. You know, I really don't think that the the women's team needs to be worried about where the goal is going to yeah. come from, especially in Rio. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, I want to give a special credit too to the uh, Chicago goalkeeper Alyssa Nair. Yeah. Who also, again, you know, this this weekend in the NWSL was. A fantastic weekend for goalkeepers mm -hmm. and a weekend of penalty kicks as well. It, it was. It was. Yeah, as we mentioned, that uh, that Houston F uh, FC Kansas City game was fairly quiet. I was watching most of the game. I was also simultaneously watching the Toronto FC FC Dallas game. I got my I had my two screens going at the same time. Yeah. But um, <laughs> and I, I I looked away for a couple of minutes and I looked back and all of a sudden it was two 0 Houston. I'm like. What the heck? It was like, what What happened in the, like, right. the four minutes, the five minutes I, I turned my head and was just looking at the TFC game? Because at the, that point in the Houston game, I was like, all right, nothing's going on. I'm going to just watch the TFC game. It was getting hot and heavy. It was a lot of fun to watch. But I look back, and all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, this game is wide awake all of a sudden. And then FC Kansas City added a goal in the 84th minute. I'm like, well, okay then. We've, right. got, we've got a ball game all it, of a sudden. It was almost like uh, watching a Columbus Crew Montreal Impact game. <laughs> exactly. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Whoa, everything's whoa, happening. Three goals in five like, minutes. Holy cow. Oh, no, Columbus was... is up 4-1. to one. They're going to win this game easily. Oh, nope, the Impact and just put in three. And they lost it. And they lost it. Oh, there's 30 like... seconds to go. They're up 4-3. <laughs> and Montreal scores again. And Dominic Oduro got me fantasy points. <laughs> he sure did. So, so overall, though, I mean, it was a good weekend uh, in NWSL action. Uh, looking ahead, Sky Blue FC, they take on Boston. FC Kansas City takes on Chicago. Washington Spirit, Houston Dash, Orlando Pride, Western New York. And, of course, the big game, I'm sure everyone's going to be watching, Seattle and Portland. I, I, I want to say this for a moment. Is Seattle the team that will always... Is, is, is Seattle the biased team in NWSL right now, I feel like? I mean, the... More media attention, I feel like, is shown towards Seattle than any other team in the league right now. Well, let's be honest. It's well earned. You know, I mentioned earlier, they've had some really good seasons, you know. Two they of have. The, two of the four seasons they've had. in Sporter the, Shields actually, or whatever. The... Three of the four. But, yeah, they've so, – so at this point, you know, it, the game is uh, – Four, you know, we're we're into the we're into the Week season by now. four games, yeah. right? So Seattle, it's not like they're doing horrible. They're two and two. Um, you know, there's 20 games on the season, so there's still 16 more games yeah. to be played. So I think it's fair that the media still gives them the attention they're getting. I, I wouldn't say it's bias. It's that you're always going to be surprised when you see a team struggling a little bit. But can you call two and two struggling? Uh, this I mean, they've the allowed season? four. They've only got plus one goal difference, though. They've scored five and allowed four. Yeah, but. 
everybody in the league is is uh, you know Washington Spirit is the exception. They've got a, a plus, plus five. five. Yeah, but everybody else is one two one two. Sure. Uh, Boston Breakers are negative six. So there's Boston. an extreme for you. They keep uh, hitting the woodwork. They keep missing penalties. It's, it's well, ridiculous. that's the thing. Yeah, first first uh, penalty kick of the season and Mewis. Christy doesn't doesn't get come it on, there. come on. So no, my my overall point is I think Seattle still has a right to get the media attention that they're sure. Getting. No, that makes sense. I mean, so yeah, I mean, looking at the new power rankings that NWSLSoccer dot com put out, Washington stays at number one. The Red Stars jump up from four to two now. Portland stays at three. Orlando moves from seven all the way to th- to fourth. Houston um, they go up from sixth to fifth. The Seattle Rain drop two. They go down uh, from four to six. Western New York Flash. They move up to uh, move up to seven. Sky Blue at eight. FC Kansas City stays at nine, and the Boston Breakers stay at ten. Yeah, deservedly so. It's interesting to see if Boston will be able to break out of pun completely intended, by Ooh. the way, to break out of the rut that they're in. Uh, but Washington Spirit, um, you know, they remain. Undefeated, three yeah. wins and a draw, and you gotta you gotta wonder, you know, I mean, is this? But I, I wonder though, how much of that's going to have to go through Diana Matheson and Crystal Dunn and Christine Nairn. That's that's great that they've got these different options, but I want to. I feel like sometimes when I watch Spirit games, that I don't see as many attacking options as the team needs to fully be successful down the way. And I say that with the Chicago Red Stars too, watching some of those games too. Sure, it's, it seems like Kristen Press is just on an island by herself, and she's just making the most of the chances that she's had so far. Yeah, and I, I totally hear what you're saying, but maybe that is their style, and right now it's working. Exactly. So we'll, we'll see if that works out going for them. Um, Portland and Seattle, though, definitely going to be the game. I know a lot of folks are going to have their eye on. Simon, is there a game you're going to try to keep your eyes peeled to it all this weekend? Uh, let's see here. Let's see here, Baxter. I just went to a different screen. i got to go back and look at what we got here. Um, hmm. I think I'll be watching the Seattle Portland game. That makes sense. Why wouldn't you not? Uh, I'll be I'll be keeping an eye on that uh, that Houston Washington Spirit game as well. And FC Kansas City Chicago has an opportunity to be a good game, but uh, you never know. I'll tell you what. There's there's one other game I'll definitely be watching. That's the Orlando Pride taking on the Western New York Flash. Uh, you know, I want to see if the Flash can can take down. These, uh, these mighty lionesses. Exactly. And speaking of Western New York Flash, in our next segment, we're going to be joined by Western New York Flash head coach Paul Riley as well. We'll chat with him and get his thoughts on how his ladies are doing so far. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. All right, Simon, time for our women's soccer spotlight here on the program. We have the opportunity to bring in a man that is very well known in the women's soccer game. He used to be the head coach for the Portland Thorns. Now he finds himself in the great state of New York. The head coach of Western New York Flash, Paul Riley, joins us here on Two Up Front. Paul, how you doing, sir? And thank you so much for joining the program today. Uh, it's great to be here, guys. Yeah, enjoying it so far. Only six weeks in, uh, huh? but it's been a great preseason, and most of preseasons are, you know. So I'm just getting out of preseason now, starting the games on the way, and trying to figure some of the X's and O's out. Absolutely, yeah. You're a couple of games in already on the year. Uh, you led off the season with, uh, I think, what some folks are calling a surprise uh, upset over uh, Kansas City FC. Was that so much of an upset to the media, or more of an upset even in your guys' mind too, going out to take out the defending champions week one? Yeah, I think you can call it an upset, you know. I mean, obviously, the expectation um, was not to be the, the reigning two-time champs, to be honest with you. And we got a very young team. Um, I mean, tonight we have a game, and, you know, going out, and I think we have nine of our 11 or 22 or under, you know. So they have a very, very young team. Um, but, you know, that's the good thing about it. They're fearless. They don't think about who we're playing, what kind of stars are on the other team. They're not stargazing. They're not up at the back of the shed. And I think it's been good for us, you know, you know, just go into a game and we have our, the way we're going to play and we do the best we can with what we have. And I think it's a good group. They like each other a lot and they work really hard. I mean, their work rate is fabulous. And, you know, anyway, we get three points in Kansas. I think, you know, beginning of preseason, when you said you get three points off the first two games away from home, if you would have taken it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think what happened was after, after the first win in Kansas, everyone was a bit disappointed with the Chicago game. We never really play. We didn't have as much energy as we did the previous week. Um, and, you know, if we don't have energy and we look fatigued, we're in a struggle, you know, we're young, we've got energy, we're hungry, and I think we need to, to be ready to play, and we just went against Chicago, it wasn't a good performance for us. I think we're all disappointed from it because of, the, because of what we did in Kansas City, and 
and obviously tonight we get an opportunity um, to put things right at home in the first home opener on new field. They just put new test out. So it'll be good. It'll be a fast game. Um, you know, temperature will be good for us. So I don't think we'll have any excuses for that. We're just going to get on with it. We're home and obviously we're playing the top team in the league at the moment, Washington. And you know, they've got a lot of internationals and a lot of quality in their lineup. But um, we're just going to have to accept them and we'll warm up a little bit and, you know, hopefully get some good success on it. So, Paul, a uh, question for you. When you were with Portland, you had some more veteran players there, and obviously, as you had already mentioned, you've got a lot of youth with uh, Western New York Flash, a lot of talented youth, though. Yeah. Do you have a different approach when you have, um, you know, a lot of young players versus those veteran players? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, whether it's men, women, young, old, um, to me, it doesn't matter what you coach, you are what you are, you know. You have the beliefs and, and, and the protocol and the process that you believe in, and you provide them with an environment, and then you move on from there. And you know, the thing about Portland was, was more so the fact that the players were never around. I think that's the biggest advantage we have, not the fact whether they're young or old, but the advantage here is that all 20 players are in camp. Most of us can hear the whole way, and I think there's a big difference to, to getting on board with the train and everybody knowing everything about what we're doing, you know, as opposed to just coming in and out all the time. And, it's very difficult, you know. It's okay that two or three coming in now, but when you have ten players coming in now out of twenty, <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To keep some, you know, to, just to keep everything together and hold it together, and you know, players still expect to play, and there's other players working hard at home, and then they come in, and it's just difficult, you know, to keep the whole group moving forward. This one's been a bit easier in terms of that because we are all here, we are all, all around every day, and you know, preseason with two a days, and you know, they get along really well, and. I think they're excited for the challenge too because there is no expectation. I think every single poll was picked just to finish eighth, ninth, to tenth. And uh, so for us, there's, there's no expectation, there's no pressure. And I think that helps the young team. We just go out and do the best we can with, with the game plan we've got. And, you know, so far so good. Absolutely, but, yeah. You know, whether it's old or whether, I wouldn't say old players, but whether it's experienced players or inexperienced players, they're all the same. You know, they all train hard. And, you know, the great thing about the female game is they listen. <laughs> um, they, they train their tails off. You know what I'm saying? You give them a yeah. plan, they stick to the game plan. You know, and that, that goes for every team. I can't imagine any, any team I've ever coached, they've all been the same. Philadelphia and New York, they're all the same, man. And, and that's a great thing about that game, the part of the game in the females, is that if you took your game plan in and, you know, if your game plan's wrong, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Simon yeah. does that too. You Simon's know, yeah, a coach too for that. Team, but we, just, we do have some leaders on the team. Sam Hughes has really stepped up and, Obviously, she's got a great chance to go to the Olympics, and I think that leadership's been critical so far. Abby Erdogan, the New Zealander, has come in with good leadership. Al Camp has done to, to get a grip of the team. Um, you know, there's been a lot of good surprises for me, you know, uh, players that, you know, when you see from the outside, maybe you think, oh, she's okay, and then when you actually coach her on the ground floor every day, you realize how good they are and how smart they are as football and, and, and what they offer to the team, and I've been really pleasantly surprised by a lot of them, and Excited for the group, to be honest with you, because we're completely unknown source, and nobody knows anything about us, and you know, they're looking at the back of our shirts, and well, well, who's that? And, and then, <laughs> I think you turn, like you turn our players, don't waste so much on the back, it's what's on the front. Yeah. You know, so hopefully, yeah, they'll know a few of the names on the back by the end of the season, you know? Exactly, I and mean, you mentioned that too. It's not so much about the uh, the name on the back as it is on the front. I mean, being a part of an organization like Western New York Flash, I mean, even just looking at it, you're the 2013 Shield winners. You know, you've won some championships as an organization as a whole through the various leagues that have been around here in women's soccer. But you know, you're very you're, you have an established team. It's just maybe right not this exact second. If fans are keeping an eye on, you know, what's going on. Obviously, folks judge a team. You know, they live and die by the championships that you win, but you know, right the last sure. couple of years, it's been Kansas City that's been the, the lucky ones. But that's the great thing about women's soccer, though. I mean, in any sport, though, especially soccer, I mean, look at Leicester City right now in the Premier League. Anybody can win a championship any year at this point right now. So yeah. why why not Western New York Flash this season, right? I mean, you, you <laughs> ladies have a, a good opportunity. We've chatted with a couple of the ladies on your team before, and it seems like... There's yeah. really no big ego that's driving your team, which is great because sometimes you find that one or two players that are like, "Oh, it's about me." As, if, as long as I get my, you know, my couple hundred touches a game and my shots and my goals, you know, we'll be just fine. It's like, no, we're a team. We want to win as a team. It's not about trying to stoke one person's stats. I think, which is good to see. I feel like you're putting pressure and expectation on us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help you uh, out, coach. Everything you said is completely true. 
I mean, completely true in our locker room, you know. And, um, you know, the quality of training sessions is really good. I mean, you know, it was important to do an offense. The problem was we only had 10 or 12 at practice, you know. It was always difficult uh, to get numbers in practice. And, you know, the support structure in Portland is amazing, obviously, with the MLS team. You know, the general manager is a fantastic general manager. The ownership is great. It, 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 you know, the, the support was just amazing. And, it, you know, I thought we had a really good roster. I think been given time to develop the roster would have been really good had they opened around, of course. Yes. Now, this yeah. roster's young, Charlie Philippar, Charlie Philippar, Charlie uh, Namo has put this uh, squad together over the last couple of years with Aaron, and uh, they've given me a really good team, I think, you know, and it's, it's going to be a couple of years. You know, Kansas City, a lot of those players play for me in Philadelphia. I think it's the best group probably five, four, five years to, to really develop into a top team, uh, which they did, and they won a couple of championships with it, and obviously now they're starting to uh, retire and move away from the game, but I think this group is young. Mm-hmm. I think if you can hold them together for, for, for three, four, five years, I think it could be a really successful group. But you just never know, you know. Things change, pieces change. And, you know, for me, it was an honor really just to be coaching because, you know, Aaron's been at the helm through all those championship years and they won a lot of championships. And, you know, when you, when you walk in the facility and you see Marla on the wall and Abby Wombach on the wall yeah, and yeah. Morgan on the wall and, and Sinclair on the wall and Sega on the wall and Vera on the wall and, the list goes on and on. And exactly, on. yeah. A very established well, well, organization. Well, players have played here, you know, and I think the Watchmen has been here. The difficulty for here now is the fact that there's a cap, you know what I'm saying? And WPS, there's no cap, so they're able to spend a lot of money to bring the top players here, and now there's a cap. So now we have to put a team that, that likes each other. We have to give them, you know, uh, make it exciting for them yep. in the area. Of living in Buffalo and living in Rochester. Yeah. We have to make people want to come here, and the only way to want to come here is enjoy practice, enjoy the, the environment that they've given them and, and, you know, make sure the housing is good for them and making sure that we're taking care of the players, you know. And I think if you can do all those ancillary things, then you know, the stuff usually goes pretty smooth. And, you know, I think so far so good, you know. It's a change, obviously, in the coaching. Um, there's a lot of young, new players. and I think Charlie and me talk every day, you know, and, you know, just the exciting part is that, you know, we're not quite sure how it's all going to pan out, you know. And from a coach's perspective, I feel a bit nerve-wracking, but for me, so it's refreshing, to be honest with you. know, last year we went every game. Everyone thought Portland was going to win every game, you know, and we go into games without seven of our starters, and people would still expect us to win. Which is so good, yeah, exactly. Was expect- that was just the expectation there. Now, you know, fully healthy team, and nobody expects you to win, and everybody's here, so yeah. <laughs> it's not so bad, you know? Exactly, that's so how bad. it goes sometimes. You know, we don't go into it. I don't think we get into any games yet thinking, you know, we're going to get beat here, but I think the challenge for us is... Um, you know, what is the temperament of the younger players going to be like? You know, mm-hmm. the big two or three new players stepping into the lineup tonight. You know, what will they, how will they handle the pressure of their first game in NWSL? And will it be something they just embrace? And, you know, we've taken as much pressure off them as we possibly can and just tell them it's the process and there's another game in the process. And, you know, if it doesn't go that well, then we'll get up tomorrow morning, we'll get back to work and, and we'll put it right, you know. So, we're so, trying to make it easy as we can for the younger players to, to get the job done and, and hope it'll work you know, in our favor. Paul, I'm uh, I'm the elder statesman, uh, elder statesman on the show here, <laughs> and uh, I always like going back and, and seeing you know what leagues the head coaches of of any of the top American leagues have played in, and um, you know I recognize quite a few of the teams that you've played on. Of course, uh, it looks like you spent some time with the Long Island Rough Riders and maybe played a season with Tony Miola there in goal. There's actually yeah. an important part of this question. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're still coaching in a fledgling league, a league that's only been around for four years. Do you rely on some of your experience playing in the the uh, you know the mid '90s in in the U.S. And, and and trying to push those leagues forward? Do you rely on that experience with pushing the NWSL forward, or is that that's just your experience and, and it's what yeah. you use? And I think every experience in the game is what built what built the coach. You know, having coached in the men's side, you know, I played the Ruffers and I coached them, and they, when I coached them, it was the second year in MLS. So a lot of the players, you know, Chris Armas of the world, the left the Rough Riders, uh, we had a championship team in 95, and then, um, you know, a lot of them went to MLS. And, you know, I started coaching them in the A-League, and those experience of coaching top players, and I think they never leave, you know. I think they're really important. And, you know, part of, you know, when I was the captain of the team and the old was in goal, not an easy job, was it? Yeah, you know, right. I'm the captain, and there's Tony Miola, who's bigger than bigger personalities in the world, going to the World Cup, <laughs> You know, you gotta, you gotta tell Tony to, uh, you know, calm it down or whatever it is. <laughs> yep. You know, you, you establish a great relationship and, you know, me and Tony, you know, we still talk and 
Thanksgiving weekend. I'm coaching the U-17 Gales team. I bump into him. He's coaching the U-15 Gales team at Doris. You know, we have a good laugh. And, I think mean, that's part of the game. It just never changed. It was a relationship. And, you know, when the Rough Riders had a Hall of Fame in Long Island, you know, a month ago, and you know, we got inducted, I got inducted, Giovanni Saparese got inducted. Wow. Uh, Jimmy okay. Rooney, Jimmy Rooney, who's, you know, with Tony Miola now, and Mike Masters, and Kevin Anderson, and Danny Moore, and all these big names. It was just great to see everybody again. And you all think to yourself, you know, 16 of that team is in coaching. And, you know, we were, it was a fun group to play with and a memorable group to play with. I think you take those experiences for sure. And, you know, I used to say to our girls all the time, you don't know how good you got it. We used to play Cape Cod on a, on a Saturday and then go up to Boston and play on a Sunday, you know? Yeah. <laughs> play back to back 90 minute games, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's probably go out on the night on Saturday and go out on the Saturday night, you know? So they, they've got it, they've got it nice for them now when they have to play one game in a week and the preparation is perfect. And, you know, a lot of the stuff you guys have gone through a lot. You know, there's a great commercial with the Heineken commercial where I am Socky, you know. This right, yeah. Where this 50 years ago, no one knew my name. And yeah, I, I thought that was a great idea by them. It's come through all these times, and, and now we've got GPS information on players. Now we've got, you know, we know what they're eating. We know how to sleep. <laughs> we know just about everything. You know, they didn't know anything about us. We'd be out Saturday night before the game next morning, and we'd do all right, you know. So Absolutely. I mean, obviously, the game's changed, and all the nutritional side and everything. And I think the advancements have been fabulous for the sport, and you just, you know, the one thing I make sure is it's not paralysis by analysis, you know. We don't over analyze it. We give the players as much information as we can without destroying their confidence and without taking away exactly. from the natural beauty of the game. And I think that's always been the, the time balance. But I yeah, made a lot of good friends through the, through the years. And, you know, we still talk to all of us. And we're all in different, you know, he's in Jacksonville now, Tony, and, and I'm in Buffalo, you know. And, and next year, who knows? You know, so right. in New York, you just never know where you, where you end up and what you do. But every... Every great experience is so different, you know. People said, oh, you're not going to like it in Buffalo. And, you know, <laughs> I love it. You know, in Portland, I was in coffee houses every day. And I was in coffee house, which, which I'm sitting in now talking to you from. And, nice. You know, just the thing, you know. And they make it good for the players, you know. You give them restaurants. And I think all of a sudden, Buffalo is not a bad place to be, you know. And I think that's really important that you can offer the market and make sure that the market's good for the players. And you can bring some, you know, we've got foreign players and we've got a Korean, we've got a New Zealander, we've got a Colombian, we've got two Canadians. Um, we got a Nigerian. Uh, so, I mean, we got a good balance of different types of players. And, yeah, it's been really fun so far. I have to be honest with you. It's a lot of fun so far. That is one of the beautiful things about the beautiful game is just the diversity of culture you get to experience on, you know, a roster with 22 players on it. That's... Uh... That's it's pretty awesome, and hey, you know, one thing you got to do is maybe give Tony a call and, and have Jacksonville Armada and the uh, Western New York Flash have a closed door scrimmage or something yeah. like that. <laughs> 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 Tony, if Tony plays in net, Mike can play off one. There you, there you oh, go. <laughs> hey, we'll come and do the game for you too. Well, Paul, we appreciate you taking some time with us today here on Two Up Front. Uh, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, hopefully we can check in with you a little bit mid season if, if if possible. Sounds good, guys. Yeah, and uh, hey, and hey, congrats. Much. Congratulations on the uh, on the Rough Riders Hall of Fame nomination or uh, e- uh, election rather selection. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, it was, it was a great night. It was a great night. Absolutely, it was really, it was a great night. All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much, Paul thank Riley, head coach of the one. Western New York Flash, here on Two Up Front. We are going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got much more action for you in store. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. All right, Simon, time to move into the wonderful world of Major League Soccer. Special thanks to Western New York Flash head coach Paul Riley for joining us in the last segment. Great to always hear from him and to check in to see how his ladies are doing so far. And uh, as we mentioned, too, they've got a a big game coming up this weekend. Sure do. As well. All right, Simon, uh, we won't spend too much time looking back at the week that was in MLS, but uh, we can look at it fairly quickly, wouldn't you say? Uh, why don't you why don't you run us through some of the uh, the action that took place this last week? And I know, personally, I was a little upset because the Galaxy manhandled the Revolution. It was three 0 at halftime. For God's sake, it sakes. was incredible. I did not. I you know, I definitely overestimated or underestimated the Galaxy this past. I'll week. be honest. I wasn't surprised when I saw the scoreline. I I knew going into this game that the Revs were going to lose. You know, for me, the surprising win of the week was actually uh, New York City FC, but. 
you look at where they're at. Is it surprising though? Cause well, it's, that's what because it's DC United. Yeah, but you know, the last time DC played at home, I mean, they've they've had a four zero win at home this year. True. And you, uh, against a team like NYCFC, whose defense is terrible, I was surprised it wasn't at least a draw. That is true. No, that is true. But Josh Saunders did really well in this game. David Villa continues to find ways to score. NYCFC look kind of good. Kind of. I don't want to get too outlandish with no, it, actually, but I, I mean, think, I think it's fine to say they look good. I mean, the, the questions will always be in the defense, but midfield, offensively, David Villa on fire, uh, McNamara, yeah, outstanding season so far. Well, right now, I mean, the NYCFC—they're in the playoffs. They've got 13 points. They're yeah. sitting fourth in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. So, I mean, this would be an interesting playoff field right, right now: Montreal, Toronto, Philly, NYCFC, Orlando, and DC United. That would Absolutely. be an interesting playoff. Field. It's crazy to think that DC is still sitting in that sixth spot because they had—I mean, they're they're two, four, and four right now. Two, four, and four. But two, they're four, all, and they're four. in a three-way tie technically for sixth place because the Red Bulls are starting to win and the Revs draw more than they know what right, to do with. Right. I mean, they've drawn right. seven games this year. They have. They got to stop playing poker and start playing soccer. Oh you my know? gosh! But that that goal though from Kellen Roll that he scored with yes. his left foot from outside the box was incredible. And Juan Agudelo continuing to score. Maybe we'll see more from him. Maybe Jay Heaps will finally get him more starting minutes as well. We saw what happened when he started. Maybe something good sure. will come out of it. You know the uh, Cascadia match, Vancouver and Portland. I. I thought for sure, and I think a lot of Timbers fans thought for sure that the Timbers were actually going to pull this one out. Because, I did think so, uh, too, yeah. They, they were in the lead for quite a while. They weren't just in the lead. They were dominating that game. And then all of a sudden, I, I don't know what happened, but Vancouver either decided they wanted to start playing or Portland got overconfident and and started to sit back a bit. But Well, uh, I mean, Jake Gleason unfortunately had the, a Robert Green moment from the World Cup in England. He you sure know, the did. The ball just kind of trickled through his legs a little awkwardly. I mean... As a goalkeeper, you'd like to say, oh, I could have made that save, but it's moving so fast at that point, I don't know if he could have made that save. You know, the, You're know, supposed to, but I don't know yes. in that moment. In the moment, yeah, you look back, but still, for the greatness that he's displayed yeah. so far. And that, that was, I think that, to like, have that poked goal. a huge you know, needle into his balloon that everyone was like, wow, he's a really good goalie, and then all of a sudden he kind of just... Dwindled down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, it definitely, you would think it did have something to do with it because Vancouver got two goals within six minutes after mm-hmm. being down 1 0 for uh, the last 30 minutes. And of course, Nat Borcher's goal uh, was a nice little just slide yeah. and just. Being I mean, there at the I, right think time. The, I think the shot from, I think it was Diego Chara or Nagby or whoever was there, I think that was going in. It was Nagby, yeah. Uh, and yeah. then, Char- and then you know, Borchers just was like, eh, You know, I in. don't think so. I think the ball was going was to cross okay. goal, and, and Borchers... Maybe from the vantage point that I saw sure. the goal from, it yeah. looked like it was going in. No, I was happy because I started Borchers on my uh, oh, so fantasy that team. Well, so that you was got that extra, extra bonus. All, All right. right. Uh, other games, Orlando, the Red Bulls, they drew 1-1 on Friday night. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, TFC beat FC Dallas. They reopened, opened, opened the new, the new, new, new BMO Field. Yeah, over uh, over thirty thousand people. It was, that was uh, nice. I, to I see. watched the entire game. It was beautiful. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, credit to the new rookie that got the goal, Endo. Uh, it was nice to see him. Giovinco wanted a goal badly, badly in this game, yes. very badly. But they made it work. TFC they still get a, a much needed victory, and they beat that that slump. You know, it's like, That's hey, right. we go on the road for so many games, then yep. we come home and then we get blown yeah, up. I'll tell you what, the way they handled the road this year, you can tell that they, they they had that experience from last year. Yep. They, they were prepared for it this year much better. And then they come home. Last year, they lost when they came home. This year, they got nice, fairly nice badly win. last time they I came believe home, so. too. Yeah. I, I want to say it was to Dallas, but that... That may not be right. I don't remember for yeah. sure. Rocky Mountain Cup, Colorado taking uh, the game Jones up again. here. Yep, Jermaine Jones, well, he is on fire. They, people are saying he's arguably the best number nine in the league right now. He's has he scored in every game? Yes. that he's that he's. I'm pretty. Po- well, is it four? Is it three goals and four, or is it four? And th- Either way, it's you, he's scoring goals. If he's not on your MLS fantasy team, get him on there now. He's ride the wave. Ride the wave while you can, at least. <laughs> Why not? Why not at this point? I mean, I think they play a double week this week, they too. They do. So might yeah. Maybe captain him as well. Never know. Uh, Houston beats Sporting Kansas City 2-0. I don't know what's going on with Sporting Kansas City. They can't do anything. It's not like they're missing, quote-unquote, good players. You know, what's interesting is we've always thought very highly of Peter Vermees. Yes, absolutely. Is, has he spent too much time at the club? Is is, is that part of it? Is it, is it time for Well, how Vermees long has to... he been there, though? A couple of years? Oh, it's been longer than that. Has it that. been a longer? I'd, I'd have to go back and look to We see be... part of the uh, the Kansas City Wizards still? Or is that too far? You know, I want to I want to go back and look at this. You do that, I, yeah. I think that might be too far, but, you know, Sporting Park opened when? 
or whatever just it's called two. now, Mercy Children's. Yeah, Mercy, because it was yeah, it was Sporting Park, and it was just a couple. It's been of years. three or four years. It's been three or four. Be- well, he won a cup with them, though, and you know he's sure he's done sure. a lot of good for them. But, but there's some of those coaches that their system just gets too dry for the players. I, I guess so. But I mean, I don't you, know you've got it. so many you've got so many talented players. Why is Dwyer not scoring goals? I mean. Credit to every team that's played them this year, though they figured out Dom Dwyer. Though. Yeah, that's true, and that's what you want to do. You know, I mean, that's, that's yeah, the, you don't, you the don't big hear thing much talk it. anymore about hey, let's get him a you know to be a U.S. citizen. And well, they're still working on that. I mean, MLSsoccer.com dot com does a good job of pushing that. Pushing every couple that, of months. sure, yeah. sure. But you know, amongst soccer fans that I talk to, you don't really hear the calls no. for that anymore. No, I, I agree. I agree. One person you do hear calls for though still is Jordan Morris, the Seattle Sounders. They win two nil over the San Jose Earthquakes. I got a chance to catch some of this game. Is Jordan Morris overrated? Not anymore. Not with the goals. He's he's like Jermaine Jones. He's scoring in every game that he plays again. Mm. Uh, you know, he got the monkey off his back, and I think it's been four games in a row he now. Yes, four goals in four games. Yeah, that... Uh... I don't know. Part of me, I'm, I'm excited about it, but part of me at the same time is like, I feel like he's a smidge overhyped. I don't By know. By the way, uh, sorry to go back here. Yeah, Peter Vermees has been with uh, Sporting Kansas City for seven years. Wow. 2009 is when he started coaching. He's got to be one of the longest tenured coaches right yeah. now in the league. Absolutely. I mean, Dom Kinnear was at Houston until they moved him out. Now he's in San Jose. Oh, they didn't move him out. He he wanted to oh, go back right. to San Jose. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Um, Anyways. Interesting. Um, no, Jordan Morris, I, he, you know, the, the thing with Morris, he's kind of like, in a way, he's kind of like that Connor Casey type, that almost Brian McBride he type. He is. He's bigger. He's, he's bigger. bigger and here. Gets himself around the box. We've seen it translate to the international level. Yes, we have. He's got good speed, too. He's lost a little bit of weight, too. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if he makes the final roster. For well, You know what? The, the, the final America. proof is always in the goal scoring. That's true. And he's doing it. And he's, hey, Seattle is thrilled by that. They went from being completely useless, bottom of the table in the West, to now all of a sudden they've gotten 13 points in their last six games, right. I believe. You know, right. So good for Seattle. Uh, the big game everybody was talking about the weekend, Columbus and Montreal. Montreal, they were up 4-1. I, I don't know... No, Columbus was Columbus up 4-1. Was up 4-1. Yeah. I don't know if Columbus is a good team or if Montreal is a good team or if both of them suck. That's a great great way to ask it. Because I don't know what ha- this credit, I, credit to being up 4-1. Like you're, you know, offensively, that's great. But that credit defense, Montreal that for defense back. for the crew fell asleep. It was terrible. If, just watch the highlight reel of this yes. game and you will see Montreal players open left and right in the box. Mm-hmm. You don't leave a player like Piotti no. wide open and you don't let him make a turn on you. <sighs> Because he's, he's going to kill you. Beautiful. And, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That and, was and gorgeous. We have to be honest. It's not like Kamara's goals were no. things of beauty. No. I, they, they, that was just bad play by, oh by the goalkeeper. Gosh. That's kind of like the two Robbie Keane goals that they that he scored <laughs> right. against the Revolution. He was like, I mean, you celebrate a little bit because the first one of him coming back. But after that, he was just like, ah, I was wide open. And I tapped it in from a yard. Woo! Like, right. <laughs> all right. Don't get too excited. But yeah, no, this, I mean, the, the header goal from Kamara was fairly good. He got up, he rose high over two defenders, headed it in. That was good to see. But I don't know. I don't know what I think about this. They ended a 4-4 draw. Credit to Dom Orduro, Dieter uh, Drogba. These guys are good. You know, I mean, Montreal is, they, they won't go Montreal away. Montreal is stacked. A That's lot of thing. teams would go away being down 4-1. They'd be like, you know what? You guys win. Let's just get through these next X amount of minutes and call it a day. But Montreal, they battled back, and they, as you mentioned, are a very stacked offensive team. So good for them. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's you go on the road. So I, I think the answer to your question, then, is you go on the road. By the way, Vermees was with them when they were still the Kansas City Wizards. I'm still mm. looking at this. Uh, they go on the wow. road, down, as you said, down 4-1, to one, and they come back and make it 4-4. That's to not four. easy to do. No, Especially no. in a place in like Columbus. League. Yeah, in any league. I mean, you down, I mean, you talk about it even in you know, basketball, football, any sport. You're down X amount of points with not a lot of time left. A lot of teams would be like, all right, we're done. Thanks. Let's just try not to get anybody injured. Let's just play it out because we have to and call it a day. Credit to Montreal, though. I think Montreal is a good team. I would say Columbus is a bad team right now. Oh, boy. It's hard. I still can't make that judgment. <sighs> we'll think about it. All right, so let's look ahead to this upcoming week. Um, Philadelphia thinking, and L.A. kick things thinking. off. There's a bunch of games taking place here, Simon, uh, early on in the week. Wednesday yeah, night. So, so by the time this show airs on Sports Radio America on at, Friday. at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern on Friday, five games will have been played. But nevertheless, we're going to give our predictions. Absolutely, absolutely. Philadelphia and L.A., this is a game that I feel like could be a couple of double standards because L.A., 
They're a good ball club. They're scoring goals like crazy. I know we made this argument last week. They're not playing that good of teams, but they're still scoring goals in bunches. And you and you told me to shut up, and we got all you know whatever. <laughs> um, I, part of me wants to say that Philadelphia is going to pull the upset because they've had a week off. But uh, to the same accord, though, LA is incredible right now. They are, and I think LA is going to win. You know, I had LA in here, Baxter, but then when I saw that it's being played at, in Philly, at Philly, I'm going to go with a draw. Interesting. I, I, Listen, I have C.J. Sapong playing for me. Sure. Um, if there's somebody that can break through that L.A. defense, though, their defense isn't that great. It's just that their offense is so explosive. That is true. I mean, 4-2, 5-2, these are the score lines. So Good, bad, uh, or otherwise. So I will say, on a, on a fantasy note, having a player like Sapong playing against mm-hmm. uh, L.A., he's, he is a good option. And, I agree. So, which is why I picked him up, obviously. All but right. uh, I'm going to go with a draw on that. Okay, sounds good. Colorado, Sporting, Kansas City. I have Colorado winning this game. Sporting cannot get it together. Colorado, they are undefeated at home this year, 5-0-0. Colorado, I hate picking them. Give me some rapids today, though. I like it. Very good. Um, I'm going to go with a draw on that one. Oh, my gosh. I'm just going to copy because, and paste draw the rest of the week for you. <laughs> because, well, here's why, though. Uh, sporting's back at home. Um, no, they're not. Colorado's at home. Oh, oh it's in, never mind. Yeah, Take Colorado. I literally just said that. I'm like, Colorado's undefeated at home. I'm still home. looking at this Kansas City Wizard Oh, thing. my gosh. Does Eddie Johnson <laughs> still play for them? Holy cow. <laughs> FC Dallas, I'm Portland. Still thinking about as you heard from Columbus Walker. and Montreal. Oh, my gosh. As you heard from Walker Zimmerman in a couple segments ago, too, FC Dallas, Portland, that's going to be a fun battle for them. They've got two Cascadia teams. FC Dallas back home. Finally, will that be enough? Will they finally win? Yes, I think they will beat Portland. You do? I do. <clears throat> I think they are desperate for a win. I've been saying that for weeks. FC Dallas, I know, and I'm going to talk myself into a hole here, they haven't, they've conceded eight goals in the last three games. They've yet to score a goal in the last three games. But there's something about going on long road trips that by going home, suddenly sometimes things click. Yeah, and I think FC yeah. Dallas are going to... I don't think it's going to be pretty. I don't think it's going to be anything to really write home about or tell mom about or make the front pages of the Dallas Morning Times or whatever. But I think FC Dallas finds a way to get a home a victory. I think it's going to be a draw. Oh, of course you do. Good God. Vancouver, because, Chicago. No, this what? is why, though. Why? F- why? Why? FC Dallas <laughs> does tend to have Portland's number. They do. Uh, but Portland, even though they lost to Vancouver 2-1, to one, mm-hmm. they're playing well. That's you know, true. They got most no, of their I, starters back. And that's back. the thing, too. I feel like it's going to be a close game. Yeah. But yep. FC Dallas is desperate. And I think I can see them really just throwing everything into this game sure. to try to win. Vancouver, Chicago. Uh, it's kind of really weird teams, honestly. Yeah. Vancouver, a Vancouver, Chicago game, I feel like, is just an odd matchup. Uh, yeah, well, this, I mean, just because you take the Chicago Fire, who are very lackluster, you take the Vancouver Whitecaps, and nobody knows they could either blow you out of the park, or you could they could allow five goals in a game, and then you put them against each other. It's like, eh, I don't know. I've got Vancouver winning this game, honestly. I mean, I Chicago well. they play a double week this week, so, um, same similar to Vancouver, but uh, I've got Vancouver winning this game at home. You know, until Chicago puts together a streak of like six wins, I will <laughs> I won't believe in the fire. <laughs> Good luck with that one. San Jose Houston. This is a fun game down Paneer, taking on the old club. It's at home for San Jose, even though Houston's coming off of a nice two nil victory. Against a struggling SKC, San Jose's got my vote in this one. Yeah, San Jose does for me as well. Dominic Kinnear does well against his old club yep. uh, with managing the team. And, you know, Wondolowski playing up front, he likes to. Uh, he also likes to get back at Houston. That so, is true. So I'm taking San Jose. Okay, D.C. United and the New York Red Bulls. D.C. United struggling that 2-0 loss to NYCFC. The Red Bulls, they seem rejuvenated. BWP, everybody seems to yeah. really be going yeah. after it. I've got the Red Bulls. I do as well, um, which means DC is going to win again. But I'm taking the Red Bulls. It'll probably end up in a in a five-five draw or something like that. Uh, Montreal and Philly, an intriguing game. The this first one is, two teams, yes. the top two teams in the Eastern Conference. Montreal, the better quote and ish kind of team. Philadelphia, CJ Sapong, but they're playing a double week as well. So Philly has just had to have traveled across the coast exactly. to take on LA. Now they come to Montreal. I think Philly's going to find a weird way to win this game. Honestly, I just they're going to. I think they're going to maybe save a little bit of their gas against LA so they can advance in the Eastern standings against a team like Montreal. See, I'm going with exactly what you're talking about, Baxter. They're going to be a little bit tired. Uh, you know, the one thing that Philadelphia has working for them is they're one of the best defenses in the league. Only eight goals against them. Um, at the same time, they're playing against a team that is leading the league in goals four with 17 for Montreal. Of course, we saw Piatti come back to life this week. Sure. Um, they're going to be at home. 
Philly's got two games, as you said. The you know cross country traveling Philadelphia is doing. I think there's just too much against Philadelphia, and I'm taking Montreal in this game. Okay, Columbus, Colorado. This is a fun game. Uh, Colorado playing their second game of the week. This game is in Columbus. I think Columbus is going to actually pull a bit up, pull an upset. I can see game. that happen. Um, Listen, the, the, we talked about this off-air, Baxter. When you look at the MLS schedule, it's like one week there's all these wins, and the next week there's all these draws. Well, last week we had all these wins. This mm. week I think we're going to see more draws, and I'm, I'm taking a draw on this okay. one. Okay, understandable. The Revs in Chicago, too, underperforming, underachieving squads. The Revs have usually had the number of the Chicago Fire in the past, but because the, the Revs just cannot seem to put two and two together right now, I have a draw on this game. I should be taking a draw because Montreal, as we said, draws and draws and draws. But I, Revs, I, I, mean, I, I, can't, I can't give Chicago that much credit. So actually, I'm taking the Revs on this one. That's Baxter. fine. I mean, I'm going to be... I, this is the one game of the week I'm fine if they, if they actually you know prove me wrong on, but I don't know. I don't know what to do in this game with the Revs right now. TFC and Vancouver, Canada, oh Canada, Toronto hosting their second straight game at home. TFC's got my vote oh, over absolutely. VW. I think the, you know, that, that was a great thing about the game that we saw. Um, Endo, you mentioned him. Yep. Um, Giovin, uh, uh, Giovanni That's had a it. fantastic game. Bradley had a great game. Even Eltador didn't score, but but he had a decent game. Uh, so I am going with TFC. All right, Houston RSL. Houston hosting RSL a little banged up. I think Houston's going to find a way to pull an upset in this game, honestly. Houston is definitely the underdog, in my opinion. Houston takes the victory. Baxter, I keep fighting with my computer to get the names in here, but I'm going with a draw on this one as oh, well. Okay. FC Dallas, Seattle, what do you think, Simon? Ooh, this is a tough one. At FC uh, Dallas. Yeah, at FC Dallas. I'm taking Dallas. Okay. I've got Seattle in this one, I think. Seattle, they've had a long time to recover after that nice victory they've got, and I'm sure Jordan Morris is going to find a way to score a goal in this one. Uh, SKC Orlando. This is at SKC. Tom Dwyer, former club. Eh, Orlando still comes in and, and beats down, I think, Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, you got Kyle Laren in there. Of course, we talked about Dom Dwyer, but yep. actually, I'm going to draw. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Portland NYCFC, I've got Portland winning this game. I like taking the Portland Timbers in this. I think they do have a defense that can actually get control of David Villa. Uh, they're explosive with ID and Valeri playing from the midfield to uh, to the top. Flip those names around. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, Portland's playing too well to let a team like NYCFC destroy them at home. All right, when we come back, Power Rankings and I Believe, and we're out of here for another edition. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. And welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. I'm Simon Provan. All right, Simon. That music makes me want to think about something powerful, like the power nice, rankings, nice. maybe. You know, like doesn't doesn't this music just like get you excited? Like, yeah, power rankings and soccer. And... Reminds me of something else. I want to do a special shout out to uh, Soccer Milwaukee, who you can yeah. find on Facebook, doing a uh, a nice um, a nice shout out to us as well on on social media. Absolutely. So we just want thank to return that and say thank you for your support, Soccer Milwaukee, Woo. and uh, uh, you know it's it's great how we're kind of becoming the voice of of Milwaukee. Uh, kind of the, the plan. Well, that was the plan, right? <laughs> but it, it's nice to see it actually come into fruition. Exactly. But also all the support that we're getting from no folks. Kidding. So Absolutely. Soccer Milwaukee, again, big thumbs up to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. All right, power rankings fairly quickly this week. Uh, uh, my number five, the Montreal Impact. Uh, they are sitting in second place in the Eastern – or they're sitting in first place in the Eastern Conference standings right now. Um, I know that they, they've only lost one game out of the last six – so far, so they they seem to be doing well. They've gotten ten points over the last six games, or pardon me, they've gotten nine out of the last six. Either way, though, I think Montreal uh, they deserve it, uh, especially coming back against a team like Columbus. I think was a good move for them. It was a nice comeback, but uh, the three draws and the loss in their last four games is what I'm looking at, Baxter. So actually, I don't have Montreal in my power rankings at all, but I do have another Canadian team. I've got TFC. Okay, I mean, I just to reiterate really fast for Montreal. The only reason I have them at five is because they have also scored eight goals in three games. Yeah, that's it's true. I mean, they're you know as I said they're, they're doing scoring well, in bunches, but, but uh, draw or not, right, right, and you know they drew against Colorado, they drew against Columbus, so maybe I'm not giving them as as much uh, true. 
what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Respect as I should. There you go. RSL is my number four team. Uh, say what you will about them. I mean, they're sitting in third place right now. I know they've lost two out of their last three games. They've won four out of the last six, though. They they seem to still have things put together regardless of Yao Plata being in and out of the lineup. They're still a fairly dangerous team that I would be concerned about facing at this point in the season. I, and I agree with that, but I'm just looking that they had uh, you know two losses out of their last three games. Mm-hmm. And, and we talked about this on the last show, a 5-2 loss to the Galaxy, yeah. which... You know, maybe that's not. <laughs> a it's a little thing. skewed number, uh-huh. yeah. But uh, but you know, they they lose, they lose to the big thing for me was. Um, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the big thing for me was yeah they beat Houston, but it was two one and they struggled a bit in that game. And True. Had they had everybody there, I'd look at them in even worse light. But uh, I'm just not sold on RSL with the injuries they're dealing with. So my number four this week, believe it or not. Is the Baby Blues. Oh, the Baby Blues yeah, yeah, of the, NYCFC? It, yeah, NYCFC. Look at their last three games. Uh, Three-game unbeaten streak. And granted, well, not the best of teams. They beat DC United 2-0, but that was at DC United. Uh, but they also did beat Vancouver, who's who's pretty decent, 3-2. True. They drew against Montreal. Uh, I just I really enjoy watching the way they play right now. I, no, I can't, can't fault you for that one, honestly. Uh, the Seattle Sounders coming at my number three. Jordan Morris continuing to store, score goals. Seattle beating uh, San Jose 2-0 at home as well. Seattle, they're not wowing me with their play, but they're consistent. They're they're doing fairly good right now. Yeah, we talked about before the show, back, so that this was probably the hardest week for me to come up with my power rankings just because there's so many teams I could put in in these three, four, and five yeah. spots. I think my one and two are pretty obvious, and so are yours. But the three, yes. four, five this week was really tough. Um, I have the other New York club. New York Red Bulls. Interesting, okay. Uh, also, three-game unbeaten streak. Uh, granted, two of those games have been against Orlando, but they did take care of business against FC Dallas with a 4-0 win that got them back onto their winning way. So I've got the Red Bulls at number three. Hmm. Yeah, uh, why not? Why not at this point? I mean, they're they're a good club. They're continu- They're starting to wake up, and they could be that sleeping giant that maybe wakes up late on in the season and really storms the gates and yeah. makes a big yeah. run in the playoffs. Right. Um we are our number one and two teams flip flop a little bit, Simon, so we can kind of let everybody know who they are at the same time. Yeah, and actually, I'm I'm curious about you taking LA down to two and yes. putting Colorado at number one, whereas I kept LA at number one and I kept Colorado at number two. Well, a lot of it for me uh, for LA. I mean, I know we've we've mentioned this. They're they're scoring goals in bunches. But at the same time, if you look at what Colorado has done, they're actually beating fairly decent teams. Uh, the, the goals that they've conceded haven't been a ton at the same time. Jermaine Jones has kind of revitalized what they've got right now. And Colorado has also beaten LA this season as well. So I kind of took it at that that aspect as well. So Colorado over the last five games, in my opinion, has been much more of a dangerous squad than the Galaxy because they've had a, a lot of fun beating up on underwhelming, underperforming teams. In my opinion, sure, sure. You know, you know, the first time in the history of our show, Baxter, you have convinced me to flip my what? power rankings. Yeah, wow. no, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm going back and looking at these results. You're right. I mean, LA. Okay, they beat New England. They yeah. tie, they draw with the struggling Sporting. They they destroy uh, injury plagued Real Salt Lake. Um, you know, they destroy Houston, which nothing big there. But then you look at Colorado's schedule. They beat the Red Bulls, who are now playing well. They take care of business against Seattle. Yeah, they drew against Montreal, but that was in Montreal. And, it's a tough place, tough and, team. And, and again, that's that's almost a cross travel, you know, yeah. across the country travel. And their last game, they beat Real Salt Lake in the Rocky Mountain Cup. And those those derby matches mean more than anything. You're right. So yeah, I, you convinced me, Baxter. I'm switching my. Number one to Colorado wow. and number two to L.A. Well, thank you. I am so glad that I could uh, convince you of, yeah. of such things, honestly. I mean, uh, Colorado, I, I, you know me. I'm, I'm a hard critic of Colorado. I was, when you said they were going to make the playoffs, I, you know, not so many words, basically spat in your face. was like, <laughs> stop. Like, you're, you're talking crazy. No one, no, that's not going to happen, basically. But they've done, they've done some good things recently, and I, I respect what they're doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. They're... They're a, they're a scary team to play against. Not that you look at them and go, oh my goodness, they're going to destroy us. No, they're not going to run solid. you out of the stadium. You know what yeah. I mean? They're solid. Exactly. Those are the teams that are so tough to play against. And credit Clint Irwin, too, right now for the goalkeeper. No, that's not, he's not their goalkeeper right no, now. No, Zach McMath. Zach McMath. I always get it. Irwin is in TFC And right that's, now. again, the thing is Tim Howard comes in. I know money-wise, you name got to play o- him. The name is going to outweigh, though, unfortunately. But, yeah, it, it is a shame. So you wonder. It's almost a shame that Colorado wasn't able to trade Zach McMath 
before the trade deadline to they give, wouldn't be where they team. are right now. Right. Though. That's the thing. You, it's a, it's a double, you know, double negative. Basically, it's like we could have traded him. They would not be where they no, are. No, it's right it's now. the it's the emotional human in me going. You know, this guy deserves to keep starting in this league. But he's not going do they, to. Do they, I mean, do they but you can make the same same case about Gleason. What is what do the Timbers Jake do Gleason. when uh, when Quarsley comes, comes back? Quarsley yeah. will still come, will yeah. still start more than likely. I mean, it all comes down to training. Who looks the right. best in training? And Howard, right. I don't think he's going to be immediate day one. I think they're going to work him in, obviously, because he hasn't played in MLS in a while. And right. I think he could. Well, he hasn't played in the Premier League in a while. That's true. So he just, as a whole, I would start him on the bench a little bit and then work him in going forward. Or you just toss him in and say, Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Right. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. All right. Yeah. Uh, hey, let, let, let me take it off that real quick. Though. Sure. It will be interesting if Howard comes in and Colorado starts losing, though. Yeah. All of a sudden. The you McMath know. fans will rain down. <laughs> like, Bring him back. I love it. All right. <laughs> time for the last segment of the show. It's time for our I Believe segment here on Two Up Front, where Simon and I both offer uh, a prediction or something that we believe will happen in the soccer world going forward. Simon, what do you got for us this week? Baxter, I believe that this is the only time ever in this show that I will change my power rankings based on our arguments. <laughs> that's true. Usually you're just like, okay, that's great, but now shut up, and this is why I think I'm right. It's like, wow, okay, okay, fair enough. No, I, that, that means a lot, Simon. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Hey, hey. I know. I've got an open mind. <laughs> Every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while. Every every blue moon or Jordan Morris goal, you have an open mind. Well, thank right, you. Right, right. I appreciate that. Um, me, for my, I believe... See, it's interesting because there's so many different routes you could take sure. at this point in the season. I mean, NWSL season is really starting to shape up. MLS is a lot of fun as well. Um, it pains me to say this, but I, I believe that I think the Revolution are not going to make the playoffs. Oh, wow. You know? That's, that's, a, that's a hard and a harsh reality to, to say, but... The way that they're playing right now, the way that... I mean, you can't draw seven games and then expect it to suddenly turn everything around. I know right. they've only lost two games, so there's that. You know, everybody... I think they've lost three games now with the LA, but still. Offensively, they're not doing it for me. No, I just don't they're, think they're, they're going to make the playoffs well, They're, they're not doing it for themselves, to exactly. be honest with you. Exactly. Hey, I want to throw one thing out there yeah. that, uh, you know, last year we were hoping to give out some prizes for mm-hmm. our MLS predictions. We have shirts in hand now Woo! from our presenting sponsor, ShopFootsal.com. So Baxter and I will go back. We'll figure out who those winners were. And very shortly here, we'll start up the game again. We've got about 30 shirts in hand, so we've got plenty of prizes to, to uh, send out. We won't do it this week, but listen in the future weeks for us to do our MLS power uh, prediction contest. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Two Up Front. Remember, Fridays, SportsRadioAmerica.com, Sports Radio America, the TuneIn app. You can get it from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can get it on demand as well on SoundCloud and on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com as well. Special thanks to Western New York Flash head coach Paul Riley and FC Dallas defender Walker Zimmerman for joining us on the program today as well. And if you ever want to get a hold of the show, hit us an email, 2UpFrontSoccer at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, 2UpFront. We're on Twitter at 2UpFrontSoccer. You can also find us our personal Twitter handles at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. All right, he is Simon Provan. I am Baxter Colburn. Thank you so much for tuning in. With our manager being the one above, we are 2UpFront. <laughs>